You've got Mac and Mac. John McMullen and Jordan McDonald here with you on Bird 365. It is a bye week Tuesday. Yes, we're going to, for the next two weeks, talk about games that haven't been played. There are games that have already been played and overanalyze them a little bit. And look ahead to the second half, sort of, kind of, not exactly the second half because they play 17 games, which... I know it's just not out of both John and myself. I know <laughs> that, uh, Roger Goodell. We're, we're not good at math, so we n- need to keep it simple, stupid. And it's not easy with the way you've uh, put your schedule together. But anyway, you slice it. The Birds are 8-1. and one. They've got the best record in the National Football League. Is all well with the world, Johnny Mac? Uh, it should be. I, You know, you can only go on where you are at this point now ultimately i mean the goals here are obvious and it's super bowl or bust so you know it's always going to be difficult to reach that level uh, because so many things have to align correctly and you know we're talking today right now i would say yeah the eagles are clearly the best team in the nfc Um, we've already seen what happens when the road runs through Lincoln financial field. Um, They got the inside track, no doubt about it. Um, You know, injuries pay play such a large part in this league. You know, it is a Jets fan. You had to go through it again last night, watching Zach Wilson play quarterback with that great defense. Um, that would be a, <laughs> we lost Jody for a second. That would be a legitimate Super Bowl contender if Aaron Rodgers was healthy. I firmly believe that. They are no longer a legitimate Super Bowl contender. Um, so anything can happen in this game. But right now, it's the best team in football. I, I'm pretty confident in saying not that they don't have issues, but um 18 weeks and plus nine you know that's having the best record in football that's quite a stretch that's quite a a run of of consistency you believe they're the best team in football i believe they're the best team in football a lot of media outlets today will come out and put out their power rankings and uh they will agree with us that the philadelphia Eagles are the best team in football And then there's the ESPN Power Index. (laughs) And yes, I feel the need to bring this up. I, uh, since I'm going to point it out again, it's a good thing I don't need a job from ESPN because they won't be hiring me anytime soon. Uh, For those of you who don't know what the ESPN Power Index is, it's a rating of the NFL teams that's done completely by computers, putting data into a computer and having it sprint out, uh, print out, spit out. Uh, a ranking for the NFL teams. The Philadelphia Eagles came into the week seventh in the National Football League prior to this weekend's action when they beat the Dallas Cowboys. They come out of the week still seventh in the National Football League. The Philadelphia Eagles are the seventh best team uh, uh, according to the computers at ESPN. Uh, My wife is a big Fox News watcher. She's always got the news on. I'm down here watching sports in the man cave, but when I go upstairs uh, and walk past the TV to talk to the wife, they're they're always talking about how AI is going to take over the world. No, it's not. AI's got the Eagles as the seventh best team in the National Football League. AI's got nothing on us. They got no idea what they're doing. What are they talking about? The Eagles are seventh best team in the National Football League. It's an embarrassment. ESPN, you should be embarrassed. By yourself. You should just stop it. Remove it from your website. Because it only makes you look like you have no idea what you're talking about when it comes to the National Football League. Ridiculous. Well, I I, I wouldn't even go that far. I, well, I am say, going that far, John. I don't give a crap. It's I, an embarrassment. I, always say, I, I know what it is. So it doesn't matter to me. So that part, like, I don't get upset about it because they're just putting a bunch of numbers in a computer and it doesn't take in the context of the game. Like I would say, I, I like my baseball analogies. I'm Jim Schwartz. I always say, you know, the five tool player versus the, the, 
the the home run hitter, the big guy in the middle of the lineup, the guy who's hitting 45 home runs and driving in 140 RBIs when RBIs meant something. That guy's more valuable. No matter, you know, every tool in the book, you know, you can hit 300 and steal 20 bases and win a gold glove and hit 20 home runs and be this phenomenal all-around baseball player, but you're not as valuable as that guy. You're just not. It's the ecosystem around that player, and that's the context you lose when you're just talking to computers, and and that defines – I got news for I looked it up when you're saying that. You know, we use PFF a lot because it's the best we've ever had when it comes to film study. You know, we don't get to to see the coaches' film study, so this is the best we ever had, but it's flawed. Guess where they have the Eagles right now? I'm guessing 7-2. The Kansas City Chiefs, by the way, the reigning Super Bowl champions on top of the AFC again. They're number 11. The Miami Dolphins lost to the Kansas City Chiefs uh, over this past week in Germany. They're still number one. The San Francisco 49ers, a three-loss team, are number two. The Buffalo Bills, a four-loss team, are number four. Nice. The Bills are still ahead of the Eagles on the ESPN Power Index, too. So they're grading, in this particular case, they're grading 13 different categories, and they're not weighting the categories. So it doesn't matter to me. The Eagles, the, the, the weight of what the Eagles have is greater than having a good, you know, I'd rather have the great offensive line and the great defensive front than the great slot cornerback. The Eagles have had the worst slot play in the NFL. I'm not, I'm not. That's not hyperbole. The worst slot play in the NFL since week two when Avante Maddox went out. The worst. They keep winning games because the weight of the defensive front and the offensive front is greater than having a, a, a crappy slot situation. And they have some other issues as well, as we know. But Howie Roseman builds this team the right way because there are issues that are more valuable than others and that's the kind of stuff the computers and and grading everything equally will never take into account so i don't get that worked up about it and well the one thing i am worked up about is the fact that the nfl and i got some issues with the nfl overall too i just told you 17 games come on round it up round it down gotta go one way you can't go an odd number of games they're smart enough to know that you know, we're going to determine our champions by records, not by computer numbers, not by uh, yardage and the like. Uh, they, there are many an upside to using statistics and analytics to be able to determine how your football team is playing. But it should always be outweighed by the bottom line, and the bottom line is wins and losses. And the, the fact that some of these computer programs just don't get that just annoys me. I'm sorry. Maybe I get too annoyed, but it does. It annoys me. I uh, Johnny Mac Nick Sirianni spoke yesterday, and he was in a pretty good mood, understandably so, because despite they're the seventh best team, as per ESPN's power in- index, uh, he knows they're the best team in the National Football League. But is he getting a little, I don't know the right way to describe it, um, ornery? That would be one of the ways I would uh, think to describe it. He's not handling what I believe to be fair questions, not overly negative questions, but fair questions on the team. And he's getting a little defensive. Last week, he got defensive about Kenny Gainwell, and then his usage of Kenny Gainwell in the game on Sunday kind of perplexed me a little bit. If you're believing in Kenny Gainwell as much as you say, Coach, I would have handed to him more than just three times. Uh, but then yesterday, he was asked about the running game, and the drop-off in the running game, and he attempted to redefine the running game in the National Football League for the media members that were there and the Eagle fans that were watching the press conference. I've only been watching the National Football League for 50-plus years, and after listening to Nick Sirianni yesterday, I wasn't sure I understood what is or isn't the running game in the National Football League. Maybe I've been 
uh, understanding it incorrectly all these years. And Nick Sirianni knows what is and isn't the run. It brought me back to the Andy Reid days when Andy used to try and tell us that short passes count as runs. Okay, in, in, in your accounting, Andy, but most of the rest of the world thinks a pass is a pass. Nick Sirianni was redefining passing and running for us yesterday. Were you as confused as I was? No, not at all, because I've heard it uh, consistently since he's been here, um, and they believe it. So, I mean, that you mentioned the, the word accounting, and, you know, to be blunt, they don't give a blind you-know-what about somebody else's accounting. Your accounting, my accounting, they don't care. So to them, and I've heard this numerous times from Shane, Shane Steichen, it's always been that way, but, but, but the impact of, of, and how I describe it to people is they're not very good right now in the traditional running game of what people think of old school running game, hand it off to Earl Campbell, hand it off to Walter Payton, hand it off to your favorite running back, just turn around and hand it off. They're not good at that. Part of the reason is because they don't have Earl Camp and Walter Payton. Um, they don't have a big time back. Um, so from their perspective, and it, and the example he gave is actually a, a darn good one. The Jets sweep to DeAndre Swift. Now, it, it, in a team that's under center, they, they turn it around and hand the jet sweep, and it's a run by accounting methods. They're always in the gun, so they flip it forward. It's the same play, but it's a pass versus a run. So 22 yards, which is, I think, their best run of the game, to be honest, was counted as passing. Um, doesn't matter. It's just a way of people defining it. And from his perspective, and he's not lying because he said it for three years and his offensive coaches, that's what they believe. They don't care what the accounting is. They care about the success of the play. But the RPOs, the stuff like that, because they're they're running jet sweeps from the gun and not from under center, to them, even the bubble screens, to them, that's an extension of the running game. Right. But here would be my question for Nick, if I were there and uh, could ask a follow-up. So then if the jet sweep counts as a run, and I get it, because, yeah, you're flipping it forward. The ball leaves the quarterback then, goes up in the air, even if it just goes eight inches. If a guy grabs it, it's, it's a pass. It, it's, it should be, it's counted as a pass. Does that mean Jalen's passing numbers are inflated? Sure. In that particular instance, yes. Right. Yes. So do we say Jalen Hurts because he take that passing play away from him? Uh, he would have thrown for under 200 yards in yesterday's game. Are we allowed to analyze Jalen's numbers and uh, the like? Because uh, if there's a debatable play as to whether it's a run or a pass, then if you're going to adjust it accordingly, you can. But then Jalen Hurts doing for less than 200 yards. Do, do we say Jalen didn't have that good a game yesterday? Or Sunday, excuse me. Well, from their perspective, again, they don't give a shit where you want to account it. I, they, I, they, I mean, that from their perspective, they literally don't care. That's why I'm saying, you know, people get all, and I'm, I'm, I'm not a statistics guy when it comes to the NFL. Now it differs in different sports. It's big in baseball. It's very important in baseball. It's more important in basketball. In the NFL, because you have all this esoteric nature and things like this, it doesn't matter. People would criticize Jalen Hurts last year, runner-up MVP, because he only had 22 touchdown passes. They don't give a shit. They're getting in the end zone. They're getting in the end zone. They got 22 yards. If Jody McDonald and John McMullen want to say it's a passing play or a running play, they don't care. They don't care. That's why when you hear people talk about statistics, the Nick will go, I, he doesn't even know. He's not paying attention to him. From his perspective, is the play successful? Did they accomplish what they want to accomplish? I had to, you know, this discussion with somebody about injuries. Like, from my perspective, from my perspective, he's way too over the top with competitive advantage. 
way too over the top. To him, it's meaningful. I don't know why. I, I think he overinflates it. But he's the head coach. And and from this perspective of, of, of run versus pass, and this was a good example, the, the jet sweep, because it's the same damn play. But if you're under center, it's a run. If you're in the gun like the Eagles always are, it's a pass. Um, it doesn't matter. Is it successful? Now, if they lose seven yards, call it a run or call it a pass, it's an unsuccessful play. So they don't care if Jalen Hurts gets credit or Jalen Hurts doesn't get credit, but they watched the film of that game against Dallas, and it was very effective throwing the ball. Now, when he's throwing the football down the field from the pocket and he's throwing dimes to Devontae Smith, that's what they care about. Right, as well when, they should. Yeah. Now, the 22, that's an explosive p- passing play, 22 yards um, by, by NFL definitions, by most teams' definitions. You know, but if you're Jared Goff or somebody like that, it's probably an explosive running play. But it, it, it doesn't matter. It's an explosive play from their perspective. Understood. But they consider it uh, a run. Then maybe you can help me understand the other attempted explanation he had for it. If they run an RPO and Jalen decides to hold on to the ball, but then he throws a short pass to Dallas Goddard, the coach still considers that a running play? Because it came off an RPO, because there was the possibility of the run, but he threw the ball down the field over the line of scrimmage, and he considers that a running play too. I, it, it's I have not tr- that. More trouble it's, understand it's the that. point of and 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 again, I talked about, I talked about this with Shane numerous times. Um, when they call an RPO, like when people say they're, I think they get upset when people say they're not running the football enough, you know, the, the old run run pass ratio. And they, a lot of times they call it RPR run pass run because of Jalen hurts. But But the, the uh, the second R has not been as effective as it usually is. No, because he's injured and that's why their running game hasn't been as effective. And I, I, you know, I've been preaching on this show for years and years and years, how much he affects the running backs and how much he makes it easier for the running backs, but he's not healthy right now. So that part has gone away, and that's why the Eagles are struggling right now in the running game. Um, not according to as, that, coach. As far as the traditional running game, again, I, I have to correct myself. The traditional running game, they they're they're not they're not equipped for it. And and again, it shouldn't surprise people because of of the way they build this roster. They spend assets on certain positions. What I was talking about when we were talking about the power rankings. They spend assets on, well, running back isn't one of them. So it shouldn't be any um, any surprise to people that they don't have big-time running backs because they don't value big-time running backs, and you get, what you, you get what you pay for. But as far as the RPO, yeah, it's dependent on what the defense does, if you're reading it correctly. So – from their perspective, when somebody says you're not calling a run play, well, they say, well, it could have been a run. And and again, to most people, it doesn't matter because, and, and Nick even said, you know, when you just look at a stat book, you're, 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 you're not going to get that information exactly the way it is. And he's a hundred percent right. He's a hundred percent right. If you just pick up a stat book and that's why, I don't value it as as much as some people. Um, you're not going to see. We'll use the Jets again. That was a great defensive game by both sides, but there was some garbage yardage at the end that made uh, the Chargers look a, a little bit less effective. Um, from a coaching standpoint, you're like, eh, who cares? That was a great performance, um, and and yeah, they tend to look at things differently it's fair to say yeah a little bit um and if they don't want to look at the running game the way same way most people look at the running game that is we're we're just a couple of guys hosting the youtube show we're not the coaches of the philadelphia eagles our opinion counts significantly less than his does but then just don't get and maybe 
Hey, John, you were watching. It was uh, all Zoom, so we're all watching. It yeah, too. I didn't think it was ornery at all. Um, and and Dave asked him, our buddy Dave Zangaro, that was his question. I, uh, well, I'm kind of used to Nick, so I mean, sometimes he he gets a, a little bit. Uh, I I don't know, you know. Sometimes he gets a little bit standoffish, but uh, I don't think it was out of character okay yeah uh when he when he when he said and dave followed up and he said so i just want to clarify so you're okay with the running game the way it is going right now and he said yeah i don't think he is that's that's when you shift into toggle mode of he's never going to criticize people but he knows this team can't run the ball effectively until jalen hurts is healthy because he knows he knows but he's never going to say that and he doesn't have to say it. And I applaud the fact that he doesn't say it because his team is going to love him because he doesn't throw guys under the bus. But, yeah, I thought he was a little perturbed at the question itself and or the uh, follow-up question thereafter. And he, there ain't one. That is the bottom line. When you get to the end of the sentence, uh, put the period in, new paragraph, the Eagles are eight and one. And that should be the most important thing. But it does it mean and and he does say this a lot which i i hope he means it and he gets it when people ask him questions about the very few the 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 far between issues the eagles are having they're not trying to put the eagles down they're just trying to write a comprehensive story on what the eagles are doing he just seemed a little short with anybody asking any questions uh, uh other than the fact that the eagles are the best team in football is there's more to the story than that. That that's the way I took it yesterday. Was a little surprised by Sirianni and the way uh, he responded. All right, he's, he's John McMahon. I'm Jody McDonald. That makes us Mac and Mac. We got two good guests coming your way. A little later in the show, we'll punch up the voice of the Eagles in Espanol. Ricky Ricardo, Eagles Spanish announcer, is going to jump aboard. But coming up next, we're going full fledged bowing on the birds. Longtime Eagle beat writer Les Bowen's going to jump in with us here on Birds 365.